Hey, what's up? In this problem, we have to find the Laplace transform of t squared times the sine of 3t. So whenever you have t to a power times something that you can take the Laplace transform of, um, there's a formula that's very, very useful. So if you have the Laplace transform of t to the n times f of t, where f is something you can compute. You can compute the Laplace of little f. This is equal to negative 1 to the n times, and then it's the nth derivative of big F, okay, the nth derivative of big F with respect to S. And here, big F of S is equal to the Laplace transform of little f. So if you have t to a power times something you can take the Laplace of, this is a good strategy. So in this problem here, uh, little f of t is sine of 3t. So all we have to do is compute the Laplace of little f, that's going to be big F. And n here is 2, right? n is equal to 2. So then we got to take the derivative two times and then plug in 2 to this formula and we'll be set. So let's do it. Let's find the Laplace first of little f. So the Laplace of the sine of 3t. So what is the formula? So the formula for the Laplace of the sine of kt is k over s squared plus k squared. I always memorize it as follows. If it's cosine kt, then cosine has the s. If it's sine kt, then it's just k. So here k is 3, so we get 3, right, because k is 3, and then it's s squared plus 3 squared, so s squared plus 9. So this is big F, right? This is, this is our big F of S. So now we have to differentiate it two times, right? Why? Well, because this, this is two. If it's a three, then you gotta do it three times. If it's a 10, then you gotta do it uh, 10 times. So this here, we can bring it upstairs as follows. Good stuff. And now we can take the derivative of this. So big F prime of S, we can use the power rule and the chain rule. So you put the negative in the front, so you get negative 3 parentheses s squared plus 9, and then we subtract 1, so we get negative 2, times the derivative of the inside function. So the inside function, its derivative will just be 2s. So this is equal to, let's see, negative 3 times 2s is negative 6s. And then I guess we can bring this back downstairs. So this is s squared plus 9 quantity squared. Now, if n had been 1, we would have been set, uh, but it's not. It's 2. So unfortunately, we have to take the derivative again. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, I'm thinking we should just use the quotient rule in this case. So f double prime of s is equal to, so differentiating using the quotient rule. So the derivative of the top piece is negative 6 times the bottom piece. So s squared plus 9 quantity squared minus the top piece. So minus and minus is plus. I'm going to skip a step here. So we're subtracting the top piece, but it's already negative. So plus 6s times the derivative of the bottom piece. So again, chain rule. You bring down the 2. You leave the inside untouched. You subtract 1 from the exponent, and then you multiply by the derivative of the inside. That's the chain rule. All over the bottom piece squared. So s squared plus 9 to the fourth power. Let's check our work very carefully. So we took the derivative of the first, which is negative 6, times the second piece, or the bottom piece, minus the top piece. So the top piece has a negative, but minus and minus is plus. So I put a plus here. So that's this. And this beast here, this is the derivative of the bottom piece, right, of this piece here. So I put the 2 in the front. We did that. Subtracted 1. Yep, everything looks good. Before we even attempt to simplify this, let's clean up these numbers in the second term. This is negative 6, parentheses, s squared plus 9, and this is squared. And let's be really careful here. So we have a 2, and then we have a 2, that's 4, times 6, that's 24. So plus 24. And then we have s's as well, right? Looks like we have an s here and an s here. That's going to be s squared, right, s squared. 
and then we have the s squared plus 9. And all of this is being divided by s squared plus 9 to the fourth power. Let me just check that again. So 4 times 6 is 24. Yep, everything looks good. s times s is s squared. All right, that's a fading 9 over there. At this point, we can factor something out to make it look a little bit better. Um, I think we can pull out an s squared plus 9 and also a negative 6. Let's do that. So f double prime of s is going to be negative 6, and then we're pulling out an s squared plus 9. And the bottom is unchanged for now, so it's s squared plus 9 to the fourth power. So we're pulling this out from the top, so that means we're going to be left with an s squared plus 9 here to the first power, right? Because what happens is it's to the first power because when you multiply, you add the exponents, right? 1 plus 1 is 2. Now we pulled out a negative 6, so we're going to need a negative 4 here because we need to get a positive 24. We pulled out the s squared plus 9, so that's good, and we're left with an s squared. That's this one here. Okay. These cancel. It's going to become a 3. So this is equal to negative 6 s squared minus 4s squared is minus 3s squared. Then we have the plus 9. Then on the bottom, we have, uh, looks like, s squared plus 9 quantity cubed. So that would be the, the second uh, derivative. So let me recall the formula, because it's been a while. <laughs> so the plus of t to the n times little f of t. This is equal to negative 1 to the n times the nth derivative of f with respect to s, evaluated at s. In this particular problem, we had the Laplace of t squared, and I already forgot what it was. Let me scroll back up and look. Um, sine 3t, that was the original little f, wow. Sine 3t. So n is 2, so this is negative 1 squared times, and then this is the second derivative, so it'll be d2f ds squared evaluated at s. Negative 1 squared is 1, and then this is our f double prime, so it's just all of that. So it'll be parentheses negative 6, negative 3s squared plus 9, all over s squared plus 9 cubed. These go away, right? 1 times anything is that thing, so this is just the same as negative 6, parentheses, negative 3s squared plus 9, all over s squared plus 9, quantity cubed. And that is the final um, answer. So the most important thing in this problem to realize, it's a long problem, wow, it took 8 minutes already the video, wow, is that, I'm glad it wasn't a 3. <laughs> is that um, whenever you have t to a power times something you can take the Laplace of, um, you can use this formula, right? That's, that's one way to do it. I hope this helped.